Hi, I'm Emma. I'm a certified Dipsado specialist, and in today's video, we're going to talk about how to use Zapier with Dipsado. So to get started, I want to explain what Zapier is. So Zapier is a tool that allows you to connect application A with application B. So it's kind of like a middleman that allows you to connect two different applications that you might need. So some applications that you're using in Dubsado connect directly inside of Dubsado settings. So if you go to your settings under integration, there's some applications that you can directly tie into Dubsado right there. Things like uh, Zoom, things like QuickBooks, and Wave. But for anything else that you might need in your business, there isn't a direct way to tie those to Dubsado. So that's where Zapier comes in. It allows you to connect Dubsado to other applications that you might need in your business, like email automation software like ActiveCampaign or ConvertKit or Flowdesk, project management software like Asana or ClickUp, and a lot of other tools. There are a lot of different applications that can be connected to Zapier. So to give you an example, I'm in Zapier right now, so I'm just going to type in Dubsado. And down here, you're going to see a list of ideas, so to speak, uh, like MailChimp, so email automation software, uh, to do SMSs, like send text messages when something happens in Dubsado, to connect to Google Sheets, Asana, Slack. So there's a lot of options. So if you do need to connect Dubsado to another piece of software or an application, Zapier is probably your best bet. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to connect Dubsado to other applications using Zapier. So to get started, I'm just going to go to my Zaps. And you can see that I have one over here, which is connecting Dubsado to Google Drive. So what this app does, every time I have a client sign a contract in Dubsado, it creates a Google folder for them inside of my Google Drive. So I'm going to recreate this app and I'm going to show you how to do it. So here I'm going to type in Dubsado because that's my starting point. And you're going to see what the trigger events are. So contract signed, project status updated, new payment received, new project as a lead, new project as a job. So the way for me to know that I have a new client is contract signed because new payment received will happen the way that my payments are structured a lot of times are 50-50. 50 at the beginning of the project, 50 at the end. So this would trigger even at the second payment the client gives me. So I don't want that to happen. So the best option for me is contract signed because that will happen only once with each client. I should clarify that. So this is my Dubsado account and it's going to do a test. Okay, and now I'm going to go to the second part, which is Google Drive. So I want it to create a folder. It's an empty folder where my clients will be adding content that I need for their Dubsado setups. And it's just going to connect to my account. So these connections, you can do them separately. There is a different spot where you can add all your applications into Zapier. And which, so it's my Google Drive. And I'm going to choose which parent folder I want it to add. And this, so this is client projects. That's a parent folder. All my client folders are inside of this one folder called client projects. And here I can decide what that name is. I can type something in or I can use the information that Dubsado has on this client. So client first name, space client last name, and I can do this and say like project title. So I'm clear in case I have a client that has several projects with me, I know exactly what this folder is, contains. So it's gonna create it, it's gonna test it. So it's gonna generate a folder for me in Google Drive. Now you can decide to turn this app on or to keep editing. So I'm just gonna go back. So now I'm gonna create a different zap. So this one is going to be between Dubsado. So I'm gonna start with Dubsado. And um, again, contract signed. I'm gonna choose my account. So this is usually the same. So it found it. And now I'm going to connect this one to Trello actually. So for Trello, there's a lot of options here. There's a lot, a lot of options. So just figure out which one works best for you. In this case, what I'm going to do is assume there's like a template board that you use with each of your clients and it's going to copy that board. 
So every time you have a new client, you create a Trello board for them. This is going to do that for you. So here's my account. I'm going to choose the board to copy. Here it is. And I'm going to put the client's name again. Again, you can do it however you want the project title. So it's just going to say test client dash test client organization. That's it. And then permission levels, those you can set depending on, you know, what works for you. And if you want to add any team members, which I don't have, so we'll just test and continue. Now we're going to do a zap that's the other way around. So it starts in another application and it ends in Dubsado. So in this case, what I'm going to do is connect Calendly with Dubsado. There are some people that continue to use other schedulers, even if they're using Dubsado, just because it works for, for them uh, for a different reason. Sometimes they have to do like recurring uh, meetings or they have teams. So they continue using Calendly or Acuity software like that um, instead of using the Dubsada scheduler because that's what works for them. So I'm going to create a zap to connect Calendly with Dubsada. So here's Calendly. So there's two triggers only. So an, an invite is scheduled, basically. And I'm going to choose my account and test that trigger. Okay, and now I'm going to create an action in Dubsado. So every time someone schedules a call inside of Calendly, I am going to create a new project in Dubsado for them. And my accounts. So here you can assign a workflow inside of Dubsado if you'd like. So once that call is booked in Calendly, you can assign this new project directly into a workflow to kickstart certain actions inside of Dubsado, but you don't have to. So look at what's required. There's a lot of options here because Dubsado just has a lot of fields that you can fill out for projects. So just keep scrolling until you find the ones that are required. So here the project title is required. So you can put the client's name if you'd like, um, you can type something in, it's up to you. Then the other fields that are required are the client's email. So I'm just going to fill this out and move to the next step. So I'm just going to skip the test, um, but now you understand how you can fill this out going from Calendly to Dubsado. So now what I'm going to do is create a zap to connect Dubsado to an email automation software like ConvertKit in this case, but you can use, you know, ActiveCampaign or Flowdesk or anything that you're using. Um, so in this case, if someone fills out a lead capture form, you're adding them to your email list. So in this case, it'd be a new project as a lead. And then I'm going to connect it to ConvertKit. And I'm going to subscribe them to a sequence. And you can choose from the sequences that you have. So this is my ConvertKit account. Now I'm just going to pick one of the sequences that I have here. I'm going to add email, first name, last name, and then continue. And then I'm just going to test this. So the one thing that I will say about adding someone from your lead capture form to your email list, I've seen people do this. What I do recommend is that you do ask for their permission or you let them know that this is something that you're doing. In some places, it's a requirement to ask for consent before doing so, like they get to opt in or decide not to opt in. And I think that's a great option. Um, if, if that's not something that you're gonna do, like I would recommend at least letting them know what you're going to do with their email, with their information, that you will be adding them to your email list and you will be, you know, sending emails every so often about, you know, whatever topic that you're sending emails about and that they can unsubscribe at any time that they'd like. I think not letting them know isn't a good idea. Like some people may get annoyed at the fact that they signed up for like a call or they filled out a lead capture form and they suddenly find themselves on your email list and they had never agreed to that. So I think it's a good practice to let them know and ask for their consent even. So now I'm going to show you how you would go about asking for that consent. It starts in Dubsado 
and then I'm going to edit this zap to show you how to add a filter so that you can, you know, the people who don't agree to it aren't added to your email list. So in Dubsado, you're going to go to custom mapped fields and you're going to go to project. You're going to create a custom map field. You can call it whatever you want. Email agreement. That's what I'm going to call it. It's going to be a short answer and I'm going to save that. Now I'm going to go into a form and add this. So this is my lead capture form. I'm going to scroll to the very bottom to add this question and it's going to be a short answer. And all you're going to do is ask the question. And this is going to map to that custom mapped field that we added here, this email list agreement. And if you'd like to, you can just drag a text box over here and elaborate a bit more about what you're going to, you know, how often you're going to send them emails and they can unsubscribe if they like. And over here, you can add a placeholder yes slash no so that they understand what kind of answer you're looking for. Um, and that's it inside of Dubsado. You're just going to hit save and close. So now inside of Zapier, you're just going to add a step in between and that's going to be a filter. So just know that if you're adding filters or creating multi-step zaps inside of Zapier, it, you can't do it on a free account. The free account allows for up to five zaps that are direct. So one, two, like no multi-step, no filters, none of that. And, up, and those five zaps can happen up to a hundred times a month. And that's the free account. If you're using things like filters or you're doing several things inside of one zap, then you need the paid account. And I think the first tier of paid accounts in Zapier are um, $19.99 US dollars a month. So here I am going to add this, this project mapped field that says yes. I'm going to say if it contains, I'm not going to say exactly because it wasn't a yes, no, like it wasn't a checkbox. I couldn't do that with checkboxes. I wanted to, I tested it, it doesn't work. Um, so what I did was text contains yes. So as long as they're typing in the word yes, even if they add something else inside of that short answer, it will pick that up. So I'm going to say continue and it says yes they would have continued so they would have been added to this email uh, sequence in ConvertKit. So that's how you would be able to filter if you're asking people for consent to be added to your email list. So that's it for today's video. I took you through several different types of zaps and how you can use them with Dubsado. I hope you found that helpful. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below and I'll try to get to them. And if you need help with your Dubsado setups, or you just have questions about using Dubsado, feel free to book a discovery call with me at the link below, and I can answer any questions or explain how we can work together. Bye.